We'll start our study of linear algebra with the idea of a linear system. So in order to define a linear system, we need to start with the idea of a linear equation. And we're going to look at a generic linear equation in n variables. And a linear equation in n variables is anything that can be written in this form, a1x1 plus a2x2, all the way up to anxn plus b, or equal to b. All of the a's and the b's are constants, they're just numbers that we know, and the x's are our variables. So the main thing is the x's can't be raised to any powers or multiplied by each other in any way. Let's look at some examples. Here's one example, negative 9x1 minus 8x2 plus x3 plus 9x4 equal to negative 4. So this one is actually in the general form for a linear equation. Another example, ln of 2 times x1 minus 7x3 is equal to negative 5. Negative 4 ninths x1 plus 1 6 x2 minus 8 x3 equal to 0. And as my last example, 0 0.6 x1 plus 0.1 x2 equal to 7. So now that we've looked at those, let's look at some non-examples, things that can violate linearity. My first non-example, negative 7 x1 to the fourth minus 2, or plus 2 x2 minus 2 x3 equal to negative 9. This one cannot work because of this x1 to the fourth. I can't have the x's raised to any powers. My next one, negative 2x1 minus x1, x2, plus 4x2 equal to negative 6. This middle term is what's going to be the issue. I shouldn't be able to multiply any of the x's. 7 square root of x1 minus 7x2 plus 7x3 equal to 0. This first term is going to be the issue. A square root is a 1 half power, and I can't be raising these to any powers. And my last non-example, negative 5 sine x1 minus 9x2 equal to 7. I can't have an x inside of any kind of other function, like a trig function. So this would also not work. Now that we have a better idea of li linear equations, let's actually look at a linear system. A linear system is going to be a set of m equa linear equations in n variables. So it's essentially a set of linear equations. Here's the general form of a linear system. The idea is each one of these are linear equations, and I have some number of them. And the m and n don't have to match. I can have a different number of equations and variables. So let's look at some examples. Here's an example of a linear system with three equations and three variables. So we do have three equations, and we have x1 through x3. And here's another linear system. In this case, we have a set of two equations and six variables. So this is an example of some where this does, the number of variables and the number of equations doesn't match. Now that we have a linear system, the next idea is how do we get solutions for this? So before we talk about how to get solutions, let's look at what a solution is. The idea of a solution is we have this ordered n tuple, so s1, s2, all the way up to sn. And when I substitute si in for xi, each equation needs to be true. So let's look at some examples to see what these solutions look like. Here I have a linear system with three variables and three equations. And I want to know, is 1, negative 3, 5 a solution? So the idea is I need to actually substitute this, these values in into each of these equations. The first number will be x1, the second one's x2, and the third's x3. When I substitute into the first equation, I get negative 7 times 1 minus 3 times negative 3 plus 5 times 7. That gives me negative 7 plus 9 plus 5 equal to 7, which simplifies to 7 equal to 7. So that one's true, and we can move on to the second equation. This time we have negative 3 times 1 minus 2 times negative 3 plus 2 times 5 equal to 13. Simplifying then gives negative 3 plus 6 plus 10 equal to 13 which is the same thing as 13 equal to 13, so that one also works. Now we need to try the last equation. We have negative 2 times 1 minus negative 3 plus 5 equal to 6. That simplifies to negative 2 plus 3 plus 5 equal to 6, which then becomes 6 equal to 6, which is true. So yes, this is a solution to this linear system. This time I'm going to see if negative 3 comma 8 comma 10 is a solution to this linear system. So once again, we just start by substituting in. The first equation becomes negative 7 times negative 3 minus 3 times 8 plus 10 equal to 7. So 21 minus 24 plus 10 equal to 7, which simplifies to 7 equal to 7. So that one works. 
we move on to our second equation. That becomes negative three times negative three minus two times eight plus two times 10 equal to 13, which then says nine minus 16 plus 20 equal to 13, which says 13 equal to 13, so that one's valid. Finally, we try our third one. We have negative two times negative three minus eight plus 10 equal to six. That says six minus eight plus 10 equal to six, which simplifies to eight equal to six, which is not true. So this is not a solution. If it doesn't work for one of them, then it's not a solution. So what can our solutions look like? In order to figure that out, we're gonna start with the most basic case, two linear equations and two variables. And these are just lines. So let's think of all the ways to graph two different lines. We could have that our lines intersect in one point, in which case that point would be the solution. We could have our lines be parallel, in which case there's no solution, since the lines never intersect. And then the third case, we could have a line, and then when we graph the other one, we realize it's the exact same line in which case it has infinite solutions since these lines intersect infinitely many times. And these are the only three ways to graph two different lines. When we up our number of equations and our number of variables, things get a little bit more complicated graphically, but we'll learn that these are still gonna be the only three cases. So now that we have that, let's look at a couple of definitions. The first one, we say a linear system is consistent if it has at least one solution. So if it has one or more solutions, we call it inconsistent. So consistent has one or more solutions and very much related to that inconsistent, which would have no solutions. We say it's independent if it has no more than one solution, so if it has either zero or one. And we call it dependent if it has more than one solution. So like I said before, there are going to be three possible ways we have our solutions. We could have one solution, we could have no solutions, and we could have infinite solutions. If we have one solution, we can see that it's both consistent and independent. For no solutions, it would be inconsistent and independent. Finally, for infinite solutions, we would have consistent and dependent. The only other way to combine these four definitions would be inconsistent and dependent, but it's impossible to have no solution and more than one solution. So these are our three possibilities.